Greetings, dear friends. We are sincerely glad to welcome you again. Today we're going to talk with the esteemed Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. Greetings. Igor Mikhailovich, in one of our videos, you talked about how important every day is. Every day plays a really huge role both in spiritual evolution of people and in counteracting the climate Cerberus. Because if we fail to find a way to counter the Cerberus, and if we, all people, fail to do everything in our power to preserve our planet and people's lives, then it is very likely that we may face such a scenario as complete annihilation. Total annihilation, this is a state which religions also call the second death. And this will happen due to the fact that all the vessels that we have on our planet and our sphere today will disappear. So today I would like to read out loud some comments and questions from people precisely related to this topic. I cannot ignore them. Excuse me, but annihilation is better than hell? Well, the heavenly gate is so far away. And the second comment. Thanks a lot for an extremely interesting video. I would like to voice what my consciousness told me and ask a question, if I may. When I heard that in case of closing the sphere there will be one outcome for everyone, the state of nirvana, meaning disappearance into nowhere, my consciousness immediately said, Ah, there is nothing to worry about. Nobody will be suffering as a subpersonality. It's just like a sleeping subpersonality. Even better, people will just disappear and that's it. And then consciousness quietly continued. You can do whatever you like. My question is, do I understand correctly that there will be no punishment whatsoever to people who are living now for the sins in case of closing the sphere? That annihilation is even better than… I understand that consciousness will tell you exactly this. But, my friends, answer yourselves honestly. Calm down, sit down, think and answer. What do you feel about this? Precisely your perception through feelings. After all, each of you, my friends, feel and understand that annihilation is the most terrible thing that can happen. This very second death, as they say in religions, is something that is feared even by subpersonalities. And a question arises here. The dead are afraid of death. Subpersonality realizes and understands that it is dead. It understands that there is only one outcome, but it understands that this abyss is the worst thing that can happen. Well, you know, I'll put it simpler. What is your opinion? A human being is sent into this world, and he is indeed sent. When a vessel appears, a soul is sent to it from the spiritual world, and the spiritual world is awaiting the return of an angel. However, an angel doesn't appear. The vessel disintegrates, and there remains a subpersonality, meaning that information which perceived itself as personality. And eventually, the soul is sent to a new vessel again. What will happen to that information? Meanwhile, that information is you and us. It is us as personalities, us as those who haven't gained life, those who have betrayed God. After all, we are disrupting God's plans. Since we have disrupted the plans of the spiritual world, since we haven't returned together with the soul to the home from which the soul was sent down to us, tell me, will we be rewarded for that? We just fall asleep, and that's it, and everything disappears. Or will we actually go through purgatory or, to put it simply, through destruction. Each of us, even at the level of secondary consciousness and at the level of personality, well, personality is unemotional, whereas our primary consciousness, the one that is responsible for our emotions and for our perception of our own body, the most emotional and lively part in us is devoid of this perception. Therefore, we perceive this phenomenon as an instant. 
But even at the level of secondary consciousness, we realize that this process is extremely hard and undesirable. If we consider that very time from the standpoint of physics, whether it's a fast or a slow process, there are plenty of paradoxes in time itself and in our perception of this time. We have to understand that, yes, the process of annihilation, from our perspective of living people, not of those who gained life, but those who are living temporarily, that is, those who are now hearing me. From this very perspective of ours, it seems to be an instant. You know, even from the perspective of the universe, absorption of an entire galaxy by a black hole is also an instant from the perspective of the universe. As for us, we are a microcosm. There's a macrocosm while we are a microcosm. And by internal processes, we are very similar to the processes taking place in our universe with its galaxies and their interrelations. If we zoom in even to the quantum level and look at the structure of a human himself, we will look very similar. As for the processes of annihilation, you know, I will answer as follows. At the level of absorption of a galaxy's matter by a black hole, there is a stage when time nearly stops. And for that collapsing particle of matter, almost an eternity passes. But in our understanding, it's an instant. Therefore, when a human ends up not where he should, not in the spiritual world, but even in the state of subpersonality. At this level, he is already doomed. Subpersonality understands and feels this perfectly well, and it is extremely afraid of the second death. You know, I would compare it to a situation when a person commits something terrible and a court sentences him to be executed. It is one thing when you are sentenced to be executed. Yes, it is scary, and many people are greatly frightened by that. However, let's say, if the court verdict is executed quickly, this is a reward. Whereas when a person keeps waiting for years and understands that at any moment they can come for him and just execute him, that is the most terrible punishment. Although many people do not understand, they think if there is a sentence, then why is a person being kept for another year or two and given extra time to live? In this case, the more terrible the punishment is, the more time a person is given to live, because this is the most terrible stage. Anticipation of death. A person is already nearly dead, but he is still living. It is the same with subpersonality, being in a state when it cannot sleep and cannot change the situation. It is aware of everything, remembers every moment of its life, experiences them billions of times, and understands what it has done and how it has acted towards the spiritual world that gave it chances and gave it life. It is aware of all the cause and effect relationships and has an understanding of what annihilation is. And even in such a seemingly worst state possible, knowing perfectly well what annihilation is, subpersonality is extremely afraid of it. You know, we don't have anything to compare this state to. Well, again, this is... What I can give as an example absolutely does not correspond to reality. But it gives at least some understanding. You know, organs are printed on 3D printers. Well, people have already learnt to print not just human organs, but also all sorts of craft work. Layers of substance are applied and items are restored. When a human organ is printed, cells are applied layer by layer. And now imagine the reverse process, how those cells are removed layer by layer. So this very process of annihilation is like, you know, an old car that has gone to a landfill and is gradually being dismantled for spare parts. Or, in fact, like a planet caught in an interaction with a black hole when it is gradually collapsing. 
The same is with a subpersonality which goes to annihilation. This process is very slow for it, for the subpersonality itself. It is millions of years. It's an abyss that never ends, and layers are being gradually removed from this subpersonality, like in a 3D model. It should also be noted here that as long as we are living, as long as we are in the body, our body is a compensator for very many problems. It really compensates for what secondary consciousness gives us, what we could experience as personality, because a lot of different emotions, worries, pain, and suffering are very much compensated by more than 99% due to the work of primary consciousness and due to our physical body. Many of you, my friends, unfortunately, understand such an expression as heartfelt pain. It is much more terrible than physical pain. When that pure emotion eats you from within, like a worm, it's not even an emotion, it's a state an inner state that destroys a person. And now imagine that there is no such mechanism which compensates for this suffering. This is already a state of subpersonality. When there is memory and when there is phantom pain, you know, it's like after amputation, there is no limb while fingers hurt. The same is in this case. There is kind of a phantom pain of the entire body. Subpersonality feels heaviness, heat, and many other things. Why? There are no sensory systems. But that which used to perceive and analyze them is preserved. Whereas during the annihilation process, everything begins to disappear, layer by layer, slowly, for a long time, and very painfully. And there is always a feeling of fear, real fear, an animal one. But while we are in the body, for us not to feel it, and so that we as personalities can rest, the spiritual world has arranged everything in creating us in such a way that for a third of our lifetime or our existence here in the body, we are disconnected. This means that we as personalities are disconnected from our consciousness for a third of our lifetime. This is really so. Our sleep is a rest. It's a kind of resetting of programs. It is that which gives us an opportunity to choose, because that which was holding us back or dominated us from consciousness before we went to sleep. We can get rid of it after sleep. We can restart everything. Or we can continue to suffer. And in this case, the choice is up to us. So, when people believe that in case of the death of our planet, we will all be destroyed as vessels, and we as personalities will merely be annihilated. That is, you know, like you fall asleep and everything disappears. But tell me, all of us, as the entire humanity, who have betrayed God, who have destroyed all His efforts to help us, forgive me, I will speak as it is, I will tell the truth. I understand that this doesn't apply to many of you, my friends. Many of you are really on the spiritual path, and you are wonderful people. But this applies to all of humanity. It is really so. Imagine prophets were sent to us and said that we should be united, that we should not be divided into nations or languages, we should not be divided into anything, and we should not be disunited and be at war with each other. We must love and respect each other, we must protect each other, and, most importantly, we must all love God. Then, and only then, when we are united, 
when we are faithful to God, we will gain much more than we can wish for ourselves. The prophets warned us that there would be the end times and the messengers of Allah Himself, of our Lord God, told us when they came here that the end times would come. The end times, when there would be a universal judgment. And they told us many other things. Later on, yes, religions have altered and twisted it all. But today we are able to set aside everything that our consciousness has added by creating a religion from that knowledge. And we are able to discern those pure grains which were brought here by the Prophets, messengers of the spiritual world from God Himself. In those words, there were simple truths to love each other, to be faithful to the Lord God, to respect and care for each of us, and in the end times, about which we were warned by God Himself, who expressed His will through our Prophets, who said that we must unite, we must respect each other, we must take care of each other, or, simply put, we must build a world of mutual respect, love, and most importantly, each of us must love God. Yet, we begin to love ourselves, to love our kings, we begin to take care of ourselves, our friends and relatives, and sometimes betrayed even our friends and relatives, while sometimes not sometimes, but often, we betrayed even ourselves. So tell me, for all that we do, and have been doing during all this time, we have been killing each other, betraying each other and separating from each other, just because we wanted a banal, ordinary human life that Satan imposed on us. After all, what did shaitan whisper in everyone's ears? that we should take care of ourselves, that we should live well, that we should acquire, build or do something. Yet, He didn't tell us that we should love God. He told us, in your religion, you should go to temples and show your religiosity. But do we really love God? No. Can shaitan teach us how to love God? No. But we all listened to shaitan instead of listening to the prophets, instead of fulfilling the will that God Himself sent through His messengers, through His prophets. We listened to shaitan. We lived and continue to live under the dictation of Satan. Our world is now in a situation where the greatest prophecies are coming true. It is the end times, and we observe it. We see the trend that the climate is getting worse. And unfortunately, there isn't even a hint that anything will stop. The ocean is heating up. Heat is coming from under the ground. Everything is collapsing. There is an increase in various cataclysms, and we see and understand that Yes, many of you, my friends, are trying to inform people, trying to change something. Many thanks to you for that. Thank you so much for your efforts, for your humaneness and care, even for caring about yourselves. Because if you take care of yourself spiritually, you will take care of others as well. But how do other people behave? Do they strive for unity? No. We have destroyed everything possible. So tell me, for this betrayal of God, for what we have done to each other, and what we have done to our Prophets who came to us, what have we done? And what kind of a world have we built? Tell me, will we be rewarded for that with just a sleep after the death? of our physical bodies. If we are not saving the planet, which we can still save, we continue wars and many other things. You yourselves know what we continue doing nowadays and what we are not doing. 
Tell me, will we be rewarded for that? Will God be so merciful as to allow the entire humankind to leave without punishment for what merits, for not listening to God, for the fact that we've been serving shaitan throughout our lives, we're faithful to Satan and unfaithful to God, for the fact that we went against our prophets, did not fulfill what they said, but instead fulfilled and did what we wanted. Is this what we'll be rewarded for? For this we shall get mercy. Yes, consciousness would like that, but it knows perfectly well, and each of you feels the truth. However, primary consciousness immediately switches on and says, everything will be fine, the climate will get back to normal, everything will be wonderful, and at the same time it does nothing and forces us to live the way we lived. And sometimes, even realizing, when there are too many arguments for consciousness, contradicting that the world will not change and that climate problems will aggravate, consciousness starts telling us, okay, if these are the last years of life, then live them decently. Isn't that so? Does it actually say, turn to your Lord God, because the gate to heaven is inside you. Does our consciousness really teach us to gain life, or does it teach us how to become a subpersonality? Which means to undergo annihilation. In any case, that's the point. Rewards are not given for betrayal. We should be honest with ourselves and understand what is happening. And we should comprehend at least a little bit how the other world is arranged, the one we don't see. After all, each of us knows this. We just don't want to realize it. We don't want to accept it. But first and foremost, we don't want to do this at the level of our primary consciousness. In fact, there, deep inside, we do know it all. Yet we don't believe ourselves, we don't believe the prophets. Hence we don't believe God who spoke about these times, who spoke about the second death, the ultimate one, which will destroy everyone, even the dead. However, we don't perceive this because we don't want to, because we want everything to be the way we want because we remain little children in a sandbox who have parents that are supposed to solve everything for us. As soon as, let's say, we get upset and cry, they would give us ice cream or a cake. And when we grow up, we continue to whine and demand from God to give us what we want, knowing perfectly well that we are not crying to God but to Satan, and we trade our lives. We trade God's love for all sorts of trinkets, for new cars, good luck, and success. If we enjoy this life here, this means we'll have to answer for it afterwards. If we have traded life eternal for an illusion, what will be our reward? Just answer honestly. After all, these are not the times to play, not the times to lie to yourselves. For many people, there is still time and opportunity to really gain life, or at least attain peace. Peace means a whole lot. But the best is life. When you have a chance to gain life and you exchange it for peace, for death, Yes, it is without pain, but it is death. Yet, it's better than just a state of subpersonality, and this should be taken seriously in a mature way. You should finally get out of this sandbox of these illusions. You should stop listening to consciousness that tells you that nirvana is good. Nirvana means dissolution, that it is part of such an almighty world and you will become that part. Yes, you will become it, just as a fragment, as a spare part. But you yourself will cease to exist, 
And that is worth thinking about seriously, friends. You know, there comes a time when someone has to pay for all of humanity. After all, those subpersonalities who lived thousands of years ago have not gone anywhere. Those who built, supported, and developed this consumerist format, those who mocked our prophets, the messengers of God Himself, those who broke the prophet's covenants, those who created this illusory, greedy, immoral, bestial world, they are all in us as subpersonalities. They have not gone anywhere. And what has been said, that there will be a final judgment and the second death for everyone is not far away. And we understand that. And each one of us feels this when we are honest, when we are free from shaitan and can face the truth as adults, as self-aware personalities. That's the point. So I hope I have answered your question. It's a serious delusion to hope for God's mercy, for the betrayal of God. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, friends. Peace be with you in God's love.